गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग क्विकली ज्वाइन दी क्लास गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग क्विकली ज्वाइन दी क्लास ज्वाइन दी क्लास क्विकली यस वेरी गुड इवनिंग बिनारी वेरी गुड इवनिंग यस गुड इवनिंग क्विकली ज्वाइन दी क्लास ज्वाइन दी क्लास क्विकली गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग Yes, quickly join the class. Very good evening. Yes, good evening, good evening. Quickly join the class. Join the class quickly. Yes, quickly join the class. Join the class quickly. Very good evening. Good evening. Adjust the light. Just stop. मोशन हम्म 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 डन डन यस गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी यस क्विकली ज्वाइन द क्लास जिजुन वेरी गुड इवनिंग जिजुन Good evening. Good evening. Yes, in the previous class, already we have discussed about all details of the physics, science, and measurement of length. So, almost more about the length has been discussed in the previous class. Yes, Dev Prada. Very good evening. Good evening. So. today we'll discuss more about the measurement of length mass time so details i'll tell one after another so when we are discussing about the measurement of length we are measuring by using scale the position of the eye must be vertically above the point where measurement is to be taken to the by parallax has been discussed earlier suppose you want to measure the length of a curved line how to measure the length of a curved line so i will tell one by one yes how to measure the length of curved line how to measure how to measure how to measure the length of a curved line cord line suppose this is given one line cord line this is cord line not straight so how will measure to measure the length of a cord line we have to use either thread or divider so how now see now see when we have a thread now this is a black thread in my hand thread is there so just put so we will use a thread to measure the length of this curved line this is the thread i have rolled in my hand this is the black thread so now see i am putting here this one then up to this one end is put then here up to this then see how i am measuring up to this then up to this one so this is the length of the curved line now i will use the scale now scale zero mark at one end zero mark now see zero mark of the thread will be at one end zero zero yes so now this will be your 15 up to this then my scale is small one if to bigger one it will be 16 cm so by using this is the process this is the process of measuring the length of curved line by using a thread first of all one end of the thread or you just mark then marking will be here then you will put the thread over the line up to the end 
Now another mark will be there. Now take it and measure it by using a scale. Yes. Then after measuring, yes, after measuring the length using the scale, we can tell that this is the length. Now I can say, suppose I will take this point A, this point B. Then I can say here, AB is equal to 16 centimeters. Now, another way I can use to measure the length of curve line. What is that? Divider. So, you will take one divider. Divider measure the length of the divider. So, now divider is like this. You see, this is the divider. So, the divider, this space can be increased and decreased. Now, now so take one centimeter gap. One centimeter. This gap is one centimeter. Take one centimeter gap. Now put the here divider one, one up to this, two, three, four, five. Put this and put here up to this, here up to this, here up to this, here up to this, then the remaining part. What is total? One, two, three, four, five. No, no, so five complete one and remaining and remaining part remaining part so five complete one suppose taken you three centimeter three centimeter each this is taken three centimeter i have taken the divider measurement three centimeter then five complete one three centimeter each so this will come into three 15 centimeter plus remaining part measure it by using the scale Measure it by using the scale. Suppose this is coming 1 centimeter. Then total will come 16 centimeter. So we can conclude that by using thread as well as by using divider, we can measure the length of a curve line. So this is a practical thing. You have to do at home. Draw a curve line, take one thread or divider. Now measure it. You will do it at home so that you can be kept clarified about the measurement of curve lines. Now, we will see how to measure the small length. Small length. Now, see how to measure the length of, uh, let us say, length of a page. A page of a book. Length of a page of a book. Page of a book. Or we can say length thickness. This is called Thickness. Instead of length, we will say thickness. So, thickness is also length. Thickness. Yes. Yes, very good. Am I visible to all of you? Yes. Yes, very good. Now, see. Suppose, I have one book in my hand. Physics of class 8 book. Physics of class 8 book in my hand. Yes. So, my book contains... How many pages? Let me see how many pages are there. Yes. So, it has 150 pages. 150 pages. My, this book has 150 pages. Okay. So, 150 pages. I have the book. 150 pages. Now, what is the, what is the, Thickness of thickness of a single page. A single page. What is the thickness of a single page? So how to find out? Now take this book. Now measure it the total pages by using the scale. Yes. Using the scale, I'll see. Yes, see. Uh, this is coming here. One point, yes, one point, yes, one point, let me see it clearly, what is coming, yes, this is coming, oh, mm, let me adjust it, yes, no, this is coming, point nine. 0 0.9 is coming total 150 pages keep coming 0 0.9 centimeter so 0 0.9 centimeter means 
how much this is 9 millimeter 0.9 centimeter is equal to 9 millimeter for how many pages for 150 pages so what is the thickness of a single page so that is equal to 9 millimeter by 150 now cut it by 3 3 cut it by 3 50 this is equal to 3 by 50 yes millimeter or we can write that is equal to 3 into 2 by 50 into 2 is equal to 6 by 100 millimeter that is equal to 0 0.06 millimeter so now from this calculation we'll get that the thickness of a single page or one page is 0 0.06 millimeter like total number of pages you have to see count the total number of pages now measure what is the thickness of total book the whole book then divide it divide the number of pages so what is the formula what is the formula formula is now see what is the formula how we we'll find out the formula what is the thickness of single page now thickness of thickness of the book of the book by number of pages number of pages is equal to thickness of thickness ness of, of each page each page but we have to consider that all the pages are all the pages are all the pages are uniformly thick that means all pages are uniformly thick no more thicker less thicker all are uniformly thick so by applying this formula thickness of the book by number of pages we can get is equal to thickness of each page so here also we are finding length or thickness now the next one very interesting one so suppose we all are using coins how to measure the thickness length or we can say thickness directly right thickness of a coin of a coin measure the thickness thickness of a coin of a coin yes of a coin now you have seen coins seen or not yes so now see this is one coin this is one coin this is one two rupees coin two rupees coin now <clears throat> suppose i want to measure the thickness of coin but not even it is very difficult to measure the thickness of coin of a single coin by using this scale very difficult and accurate data will not come so what will do if number of coins are given then do one thing put one coin then again another another coin another one next another one next another one next another one next another 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 so now this is a pile of coins how many coins and count it how many coins are there one <coughs> two three four five six seven eight nine ten coins are there now make it a pile make it a pile now this is the pile of coins this is a solid cylinder pile of coins see this is a pile of coins pile of coins all are uniform all are two rupees coins yes uniformly thick all are identical coins identical coins all coins are there now i will measure the thickness of all the coins by using the scale now see what is the thickness see it see it yes thickness is coming yes 1.5 1.5 now the total thickness of 10 coins are coming 1.5 now see the i have 10 coins are there 10 coins 10 coins 
the thickness of the thickness of all ten coins coins taken together taken together together is equal to 1.5 cm 1.5 cm that we can write is equal to 15 mm 1.5 cm is 15 mm so now the thickness of the thickness of thickness of each coin each coin is equal to <coughs> total thickness total thickness of thickness of all the coins all the coins by whole divided by the number of coins number of coins so that is equal to total thickness of all the coins 15 millimeter 15 millimeter divided by how many coins 10 coins how many coins you have taken 10 coins 10 that is equal to 1.5 millimeter 1.5 millimeter total 1.5 centimeter divided by 10 is coming 1.5 millimeter so we can say that the thickness of each coin is 1.5 millimeter this way without using the screw guns but in higher classes if you want to measure the thickness of the coin then you will use this screw gauge screw gauge this is called screw gauge micrometer screw gauge now how put this in this here now join it this is the ratchet sound is coming that means fully tight fully tight this is using fully tight yes fully tight now by seeing scales are there here scales are there circular scale main scale in higher class you will read about it in higher class you will read about the <coughs> circular scale about the main scale and how to measure the thickness of the coin by using this screw gauge in class 9 onwards you will read about this so now in this method we can find out the thickness of a single coin okay so now we'll move to the next part that is your mass so mass new one <coughs> mass mass one mass measuring mass so mass now mass what mass mass the quantity of the one noted down the quantity of matter contained contain c o n t i n e d contain yes the quantity of matter contain in a body in a body is called its mass so quantity of matter you know matter anything which occupies space and has certain mass we are telling so that is related to anything any quantity of matter contained in a body is called its mass we know the si unit of mass of mass is your kilogram is kilogram or short you are abbreviating kg si unit kilogram now here it has different other units what are the other units multiples kilogram then see 100 kilogram is equal to one quintal q i n t a l bigger units quintal q u i n t a l quintal 100 kg 100 kg is one quintal now 10 quintal 10 quintal is equal to one ton 1 ton 10 quintal is equal to 1 ton yes so or we can write ton ton 
T O N N E. Sometimes you are writing, sometimes you are writing T O N ton. One ton. So one ton, one ton is equal to ten quintal. Is equal to ten into hundred thousand kilogram. One thousand kg. One quintal is equal to hundred kg. One ton is equal to ten quintal. So one ton is equal to hundred into ten is equal to thousand kilogram. Thousand kilogram. Now see these are bigger units. Quintal, ton, bigger units. Now what are the smaller units? Gram, milligram, milligram. Now see kilogram, gram, gram, milligram, milligram. Now see gram. Milligram. Suppose when you are going to the market, suppose to grocer shop to purchase something, grocery, grocery items, five hundred gram of sugar, gram, five hundred grams of sugar, gram unit is used, gram, five hundred grams of sugar, five hundred gram of salt, or any other grocery items. Basically, we are using unit of mass, gram. Milligram, where milligram is used, milligram is used most popularly, most commonly in purchase of gold or silver items, ornaments, gold or silver item ornaments. So they are when suppose you are going to purchase one ring, one necklace, whatever it may be, they are measuring the weight or mass. We are saying mass of the body of the necklace of the ring. That is coming. Ten gram, two hundred milligram. Fifteen gram, four hundred sixty milligram. Twenty gram, three hundred forty-two milligram. So there we are using the unit milligram in basically go at the time of purchasing gold ornaments. Suppose you are going to market uh, for purchasing a potato, onion. When they are measuring the potato, one kg. Uh, suppose ten um, gram, five gram is more. They given it, yeah, I take it. But if that case will be maintained in case of purchase of gold items, a two gram extra, take it. Then there will be a huge loss. So there accurate measurement is required. Accurate measurement for the accurate measurement, what device they are using? What is the device or the instrument used to measure mass? So now see. Ah, uh, now start from that part. Basically. The device or the instruments used to measure mass. Instrument or device. So instrument, instrument, or we can say device. Basically, we say device to uh, device used to right used to measure mass. Measure mass. One is your physical balance. Physical balance. Physical balance. That physical balance is more commonly used in the where gold ornaments, purchase of gold ornaments, measuring gold ornaments in the jewelry shop. Jewelry shop. You will see physical balance. It is closed inside a glass box. Glass box. Nowadays, we are not using this physical balance. We are using digital. Digital age. You are also digital. Sometimes your class teacher asks you by not by your name, by your roll number. Roll seven. Present sir. Yes sir. Yes ma'am. So digital thing. Digitally we are associated. So digital balance is also there. Physical balance. Number two, we are using beam balance. Beam balance. Beam balance. Number three, very common, popular balance. Beam balance and digital. Digital balance. Digital balance. So where digits are coming? Now one by one. Beam balance is very popular. Everywhere we are using beam balance. Nowadays we are using digital balance. Digital. So now see. Why beam balance? This is like this. 
the beam is there one beam is here like this see i'll show you this figure here a pointer is there pointer this is the beam this is the beam here strings are there and this is the here also like this two sides are there beam is there so now this yeah see this is called left pan left pan this is called left this is called right pan right pan this is the beam this is the beam this is the beam written up to 2 kg 2 kg up to 2 kg what is the limit up to how much kilogram we can measure safely accurately by using this device using this beam balance up to 2 kg or 5 kg or 100 kg it is written there it is written there so for standard measurements now this is left one this is right one here we are putting the goods generally right side we are keeping the quantity goods potato tomato whatever it may be potato tomato grocery items whatever it may be but here measures 1 kg measures like this you have seen this like things are market uh, written 1 kg here another one is there like this written 500 gram so these are called measures these are called measures this is the balance beam balance so this beam balance is more popular for using what the mass and the si unit of mass is what kilogram si unit but other than kilogram we are using gram milligram quintal and metric ton ton is also called as metric ton metric ton now more about it you will read in higher classes now we will discuss about what time now we will discuss about time now see how to measure time time and tide waits for none time and tide waits for none you know it the very common proverb time and tide waits for none so time time what is time let's see so it is the time it is the interval interval between between two events or instances two events or instances basically this word interval interval is used in films film first half of the film then interval then second half of the films bollywood films not in hollywood films bollywood films so interval is there in between there is an interval so interval between two events two events or any instances this is called time now what is the si unit of time si unit of time we know we know it earlier that is your second or red s now other units hour hour minutes hour minutes now one minute is equal to 60 seconds 60 seconds now one hour is equal to 60 minutes now after hour will come to what day 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 means 24 hours generally we are telling day and night but in science one day means 24 hours so one day is equal to 24 hours then next week week seven days one week one week is equal to seven days then week then month then month we have 12 months one year equal 12 months 
12 months. One year has 12 months. Now, year. Yeah. So, second, minutes, hour, day, week, month, year. These all are the units of time. Units of time. These are the units what we are using in our day to day life for measuring time. But in the earlier time, there was no a modified device. Now we are using Google Watch, which tells everything about how much kilometer we are walking, how is our heartbeat, blood circulation, everything digitalized. So we will not discuss about it in ancient time. There was no such development of science. Science was not so much developed that time. Then what are the devices they are using to measure the time? One by one I will tell. So watch the video till the end to get the total concept. Yes. So now device or devices used to measure time. Devices. So devices. Devices. Used to measure time. Measure time. Devices. So, one is in the ancient time. In the ancient time, they are using water dial. Water dial. Water dial. Number two, they are using sand dial. Sand dial. Now also, Sometimes we see sand dial. Also some people they keep it at their uh, dining room. Sometimes they are keeping it at their drawing room also. Sun dial. Hmm. Third one. Sun dial. Sun dial. They were using. How? See. Water dial. It is there. Water is there in one pot. It is given. Closed. Container. Closed container. This is closed container. Another one. This is pool completely closed this is also completely closed now there is a hole water is there up to this so water is coming to this pot how much time let's say one hour or two hour from this to this again invert it suppose like this is there then dropping from this part to this part then after completion of this part then invert it so this way send dial you see send dial like this figures are there Send dial, see, here, like this, uh, up to this. So, here, sands are there. Sand, sand, this is sand. This is water. Water, similar type of figures. So, coming from this to this, when this will be filled up, this will be filled up, then invert it. Invert it. So, we will get, let's say, take one second, or oh, here, take, um, um, five second to complete. Then from the, this calculation, we can find out the time. Shondal, shondal, this is there. Shondal in the between, there is a stick. Stick is there. Show here, signs are given. That time they are using this shadow, shadow, shadow of this, this one, this stick. Set of the stick tells them the accurate time. But that was estimation little bit here and there. Plus minus was there. So these are not used as standard units. Standard units for measuring time. Then what will come? Next came Galileo. The scientist Galileo developed pendulum clock. Pendulum clock. Pendulum clock. Pendulum clock. You have seen. Pendulum is moving, oscillating, oscillating, oscillatory motion in motion. I will tell you about the motion of pendulum. Oscillating, yes, pendulum clock. Then <coughs> mechanical clock, mechanical clock. HMT, first Hindustan machine tool, first company to produce mechanical clock. HMT, HMT, Hindustan machine tools. Then we are coming. Uh, watch, watch. Now, seven clock, clock, table clock, table clock, wall clock, wall clock, watch, 
wrist what means this is wrist watch wrist watch not clock wrist clock wrist watch table clock well clock so we are using watch clock then clock are also digital digital clock digital watch digital so now modernized digital version of the clocks are being used so other than that year is there we are telling about the second minute hour day week then year uh, month year then 10 year more bigger units after year 10 years let's say about more bigger units these are over now in 10 years 10 year 20 years 10 years 10 years one decade one decade 10 years is one decade yes one decade 10 years now 100 years 100 years one century one century then thousand years these are also units of time one millennium millennium one millennium one millennium this is spelling m i l e n i u m millennium m i l e n i u m millennium hundred years century thousand years millennium so these are the units basically used to measure the time so more about the motion types of motion what is race what is motion what is rectilinear motion curvilinear motion circular motion oscillatory motion vibratory motion everything will be explained in the next class so keep watching the video see you in the next class thanks for watching thank you all once again have a good night